This is section 6.6. .6. Our objectives are for today are the student will be able to solve exponential equations, solve logarithmic equations, and solve exponential and logarithmic inequalities. So greater than, less than, or less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So, properties, the property of equality for exponential equations tells us this. If b is a positive real number other than 1, then b to the x equals b to the y. Remember this IFF is if and only if. It means it works both ways. So we can go to this, from this format to this one or from this one to this one if we want to. Uh, and you'll see why you can do it both ways here in a little bit. But it just tells us if we have, the only way we can have... 3 to the x equals 3 to the y. The only way that can possibly be true is if x equals y. So if we can write these with the same base, then we can just work with the exponents and solve the equation that way. So, to solve exponential equations, if possible, write the exponents with the same base and use the property of equality for exponential equations that we just had to solve this. So here's an example of one where we can do that. 100 to the x equals 1 tenth to the x minus 3. Now again, we want these bases to be the same. So I can write these both in base 10. I can write 100, I can change that to 10 squared. And I can change 1 tenth to 10 to the negative 1, and then we have that to the x minus 3 power. And then a power to a power we would multiply, so this would become 10 to the 2x equals power to a power we multiply, so that would become 10 to the negative x plus 3, if we distribute that negative 1 sign. And now because these are both in base 10, the only way they can be equal is if 2x equals negative x plus 3. And so we can solve that, add x to both sides, and we get 3x equals 3, and so x equals 1. And so we found the answer. So again, the key is to be able to write these in the same base. The problem is... You can't always write them in the same base. So if it is not possible to write the exponents with the same base, then you must use logarithms. Rewrite from exponential form to logarithmic form and solve. So the book does this a little differently than I would do it, so I'll show you the way the book does and the way I do it, and you can decide which way works best for you. And so what the book does is it says, since this is base 2, we can't write 2 and 7 both in the same base very easily. And so what they do is they take and they add a log 2 to both sides. So they do that and then they take this 2x and plug it, or 2 to the x power, and they plug it in there, and they take the 7 and they plug it in there. So all they've done is they've added a log 2 in front of both of these sides of the equation. Inequality. So we've done the same thing on both sides. The reason the book does this is, remember, we have a, for, uh, a rule for logarithms that says if this base is the same as this base, it cancels, and we just get x. So x equals log 2, 7. And then we can do the change of base formula and rewrite this as into base 10, log 7 divided by log 2, and get the answer by plugging it into the calculator. So that's the way the book would do it. They'd go from here, then they'd go to the uh, Desmos, and they'd go where log 7 divided by log 2, and so they'd go log 7. Divided by log 2 and get 2.807. So 2.087. Okay? And it's fine to do it that way. Okay? I just like, 
I think it's an extra step you don't need to worry about because we can just switch this to if we use our rule for converting from exponential form to logarithm form. Remember, we can just write this as log base 2 of 7 equals x. Because remember, your base goes here, your answer goes here, and your exponent goes over here. So I can go directly to this step by doing that. Okay? And so that would become, uh, now we can do the change of base formula and get to the same thing. So I prefer to do it this way, just if the variable's there, I'm going to switch it to logarithmic form. It does cause that little issue we have to take care of when we do inequalities, but I'll show you that when we come to it. But I just think it, it takes a step out of this process. So I just convert it right away, but if you like this and it makes more sense to you, by all means, do it that way. So let's look at an example. It says, an important application of exponential equations is Newton's law of cooling. This law states that for a cooling substance with initial temperature of T sub zero, the temperature T after T minutes can be modeled by T equals T sub zero minus TR, where TR is the surrounding temperature. E, which again is our natural um, element E, to the negative RT power plus, again, the T sub R, which is the surrounding temperature. And R is the rate of cooling that's taking place of the substance. So if we look at example number two, it says you are cooking a leche, an Ethiopian stew, which you take it off the, when you take it off the stove, its temperature is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The room temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the cooling rate of the stew is R equals 0.046. How long will it take to cool the stew to cool the stew to a serving temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit? So we take our formula and we just simply plug in the stuff. So you can see they've plugged in T is 100. The original temperature is 212 when it comes off the stove. The room temperature is 70, and R is 0.046. And so they plug it into the formula. So Again, what they do is they get to this point right here where they have 30 equals 142e to the negative 0.046. And then what they do is they get the e by itself. So they divide it by 142 and they got 0.211 equals e to the negative 0.046t power. So here's where you come into the, the same thing we talked about in the last problem. So what the book does is they add an ln to both sides. Okay, and that's fine. You can do that because you can do ln on the calculator. And the ln e, remember, this is the formula we have that says that the base here is the same as the base here. It's whatever the exponent is. Well, remember, ln is log base e. And so they do the ln, because it's e here and e there, it cancels, and so they just Type this into the calculator and get negative 1.556. And then on this side, the ln e cancels, so they just have the negative 0.046. And they divide now to get 33.8. So that's how long it would take, would be 33.8 minutes to get to room temperature. Or, excuse me, to get to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, you can do it the way the book does it, or... When I do this, what I would do when I get, I do the same thing, you have to get that E by itself, but then I would just switch it to logarithmic form. Because it's base E, instead of using log, I would do LN, and so this would be LN instead of log base E of our answer, 0.211, equals negative 0.046T. By doing this, you automatically go to, we kind of skip this step, we just type it in the calculator and go to here. So again, it's, it's totally up to you which way you want to do it. I just prefer to switch it to logarithmic form once the, anytime the variable's in the exponent, without just adding a log or an ln or a log base, you know, whatever, last case it was log base 2 without doing that to both sides. So hopefully as we go through the examples, it'll make sense 
why I do it that way. And I'll kind of show the books method too. So, what I'd like you to do is try this right now. And it might seem a little confusing, but try it. See what you come up with and then come back and look and see how I did it. So on this, we have 2x to the fifth. So now again, I'll show the way the book would do this is because it's base 2. They would go log 2 to the x equals log 2, 5. And then, because these cancel, they would get x equals log base 2 of 5. Okay? And then we would go to the graphing calculator and do the change in base, base 10, log base 5 divided by log base 2. And you should have gotten log base 5 divided by log 2.322. 2.322. Now again, it's fine to do it that way. When I do this, I simply say, okay, the variables in the exponent, I'm going to put it in logarithmic form. So I'm going to go log, my base is 2, my answer is 5, and my exponent is x. And so I skip this step right here. This step is eliminated when you do it this way. You end up with the same thing. You log 5 divided by log 2, but you see what it does is it switches it. The book has it written this way with the x on this side, and when you do it in the form I've done it, the x gets the other side. Where this runs into problem with inequalities is you have to flip the inequality sign in if you do it this way, which you don't have to if you do it the way the book does. So I'm going to go ahead and do these the way I would do them. So if I was doing this, I would just go log, my base is 7, my answer is 15, and my exponent is 9x. And so now I would go to the calculator and I would do log 15 divided by log 7. log 15 divided by log 7 and we get 1.392 and then you just simply divide by 9 so let's go back and divide that by 9 now let's just go 1.392, let's just do it here, 1.39 divided by 9. And we get 1.1546, so 1.155. So that's what you should have got. A little more complicated here. Again, what we want to do is get that E by itself. So you should have added 7, gotten 4e to the negative 0.3x equals 20, then divided by 4, and get e to the negative 0.3x equals 5. And now I'm going to change it to exponential form, excuse me, logarithmic form. It's base e. So again, I'm just putting ln. Remember, ln is the same thing as writing log base e. So it's not wrong if you do it this way. It's just a little bit abbreviated this way. So ln, my answer is 5, and my exponent is negative 0.3x. And so now I'm going to divide... ln5 by negative 0.03, so we go to the graphing calculator, ln5 ln5 divided by um, negative 0.3 and we get negative 5.365 negative 5 
So hopefully you got that. Again, you can do it either way. You could have written this. You could have gone log 7 of 7, 9x, and log uh, 7 of 15. Again, you just get this, 9x equals log 7, 15. I just, it saves a step. I think it's consistent. You just have to change it from logarithmic or exponential form to logarithmic form and work from there. Um, so, property of equality for logarithms. So, property of equality of logarithm equations say if b, x, and y are positive real numbers and b is not equal to 1, then log b of x equals log b of y if and only if, again it works both ways, x equals y. So now, this is what we did before, we kind of added the logarithm on both sides. Well now what we're going to do is get rid of the logarithm on both sides and say that we can rewrite this and just work with the two quantities. So what we're saying here is if I have as long as it's log 7 equals log 7, the only way that can be true is if what's in the parentheses is what's equal to what's in the circle. Because the log is both of base 7. So on a calculator you get the same thing. So, if you can write the equation as one logarithm equal to another logarithm, then you can eliminate the logarithms and solve for the variables. So anytime I can get it in this format, with a logarithm equal to a logarithm, nothing outside the logarithms, then I can drop those and solve it. If you have a single logarithm that you want to solve, isolate the logarithm and then write in exponential form. And then you can solve it using exponents. So, as an example, we look at example number three. Because these are both ln, so they're both, remember, ln is log base e. Since they're both log base e, I can just do 4x minus 7 equals x plus 5, and then it's a fairly easy algebra problem. Subtract x, 3x minus 7 equals 5, add 7, so we get 3x equals 12, and divide by 3, and so we go x equals 4. And we're done. So we can do that when we get a single logarithm on each side. When you only have one logarithm, though, what you want to do now is we use logarithms to solve when the variable is in the exponent. Well, remember, our exponent is over here. Now, again, the book does this differently than I would do. Uh, so I'll show you the way the book would do it, and I'll show you the way I do it, and you can decide which way you prefer. So what the book does is they just put these both. They take and write whatever this log is our base is, they do this to both sides. So they put 2 and then they move these to the exponent. So they go log 2 5x minus 17 equals 2 to the third power. And then because we have that rule that says because if this base, if the logarithms in the exponent and the bases are the same, that cancels. And we get 5x minus 17 equals 2 to the third and then we can solve for x. My thing is, why not just switch it to exponential form to start with? So now we get 2 to the third equals 5x minus 17, because remember, base, exponent, answer. And so we, again, we skip a step by doing it that way. Again, you can do it either way. Again, the only problem that we run into when we do it this way is as opposed to this way, as you can see, the 5x minus 17 is on opposite sides. Well, with an equal sign, that doesn't make any difference. But once you do an inequality, then it puts it on the wrong side, and so or opposite side, so you have to flip the inequality if you use my method to do this. So, again, you can do it whichever way you want. 2 to the third is 8. Add 17. both sides. Divide by 5. So 5 equals x. 
and we're done. So let's take a look at example four. So now we have, again, we either need to get a single logarithm on both sides. So I could move this over here, but the problem is I'd still have the two on the outside of that because I'd have to subtract this, and so that wouldn't get me to a single logarithm. So what I need to do is get to, uh, I need to get to either one logarithm on each side, either this, so I can drop the logarithms, which we can't do here because, if, again, I couldn't subtract this. And so then I would get 2x equals 2 minus the log of x minus 5. But the problem is I have a log on each side, but I have this 2 outside. I don't have it by itself. I need to have it by itself. So that won't work. So what I have to do is use the previous rules we've had, which remember addition can be written as multiplication. So I can take these two logarithms and combine it into one and go 2x times x minus 5 equals 2. You know, remember, it's log, there's no base, so it's base 10. That's a common logarithm. So I can just switch this to exponential form. My base is 2, or 10. My exponent is 2, and my answer is 2x. And we do just have to distribute that, so that would be 2x squared minus 10x. Then it is a quadratic, so to solve a quadratic, we set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 10 squared, which is 100. Uh, now we can either use the quadratic formula or factor that. Let's try factoring it. I can pull a 2 out. And that does factor into x minus 10 and x plus 5. So our answers are 10 or negative 5. Um, and so if we check that, let's go back. This would be log 20 and um, 10 minus 5 is 5, so log 5 equals 2, okay? And if we check this, remember addition becomes multiplication, and so that would become log 20 plus 5 times 5 would be 100. And if we think of our exponential form, our base is 10, so 10 squared equals 100, that checks. But what about the negative 5? If I do negative 5, so we can see that this is true. 10 squared is 100, so we're okay on that. If we do negative 5 and we plug negative 5 in, the problem we run into is we get log of negative 10. And if you remember back originally, we don't take logs of negative numbers. And so that would be an extraneous solution, and we would uh, work that out. So one thing you have to be careful of, again, we're not going to take logs of negative numbers. On MP5 through 8, I'd like you to pause the video here, try these, and see how you do on them. And then come back and check and see if you did it correctly. So, they're both ln, so that's log base e. Since they're the same, we can just drop the logarithms and solve it. So we would subtract 2x and get 5x minus 4 equals 11, and then we would add 4 to both sides, and get 5x equals 15, and divide by 5, so you should have gotten x equals 3. Again, get a single logarithm on both sides, we drop that. It's this one. So now again, you can do it the way the book would do it, they would add the base the 2 and put these in the exponent. I'm just going to switch to exponential form. So 2 to the 5th equals x minus 6. So 2 to the 5th is 32. Add 6. And so 38 equals x. 
and we're okay here. This is a positive number, so we're okay. Here we have two logarithms. We can't get to a single log on each side, so we need to get this down to a single logarithm. So addition becomes multiplication. So you get log, we're going to go 5x times x minus 1 equals 2. So I get it down to a single logarithm. Uh, let's go ahead and distribute this right now. So this would be log 5x squared minus 5x equals 2. I'm going to switch this from logarithmic form to exponential form. So remember, since there's no base, it's base 10. So 10 squared equals 5x squared minus 5x. Let's set it equal to 0. 10 squared is 100, so I'm going to subtract 100. Try factoring it. Pull out a 5. x squared minus x minus 20. And so then you can do the x method, which factors this into x minus 5, x plus 4. And so our answers are 5 and negative 4. If we go back up here, 5 is okay. We get 25 and 4, so we're okay there. If we do negative 4, though, we get negative 20, so that would be an extraneous solution, and it would just be 5 for the answer. So you should have gotten 5. The next one, again, we have to go from 2 to 1. So addition becomes multiplication. So we get log 4. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this. x times that would be x squared plus 12x. Again, you should put that in parentheses because if you don't, it would really read log 4x squared and the plus 12 would not be affected by the log base 4. Equals 3. Change it to exponential form. So we get our base is 4 to the third equals x squared plus 12x. So again, it's a quadratic. Uh, 4 to the third is 64. x minus 64. Um, that factors into, again, you can do the x method, but it factors into x plus 16 and x minus 4. And so negative 16 and 4. Again, if I put negative 16 in here, I'm going to get a negative number. So that's an extraneous solution. And so our answer should be 4. All right. So again, you can check these. It's not that hard. Plug it in. 4 plus 12 is 16. So we get 16 here and we get 4 there. And then addition becomes multiplication. So that would become log 4. 16 times 4 is 64. And no, exponential form is 4 to the third equal to 64. Yes, so we know we got it right. So hopefully those worked for you. And then the last thing we're going to do on this is the inequality properties, which is really the same thing. The only difference is now we have an inequality. If b of x is greater than b of y, that's true if and only if x is greater than y. And if it's less than that, it's true if and only if x is less than y. And then the same thing happens with logarithmic properties of inequalities. If b of b, x, and y are positive real numbers and b is greater than 1, then the only way this can be true is if x is greater than y. So again, that's if and only if works both ways. And if log b of x is less than log b of y, if and only if x is less than y. So here is again the thing you have to remember. If you do it the way I do and you convert it from logarithmic form or exponential form into the other one, then you have to switch the inequality sign. And I'll show you that when we go through these. So in example 5, it says 3x equals 20. So what the book would do is they would add um, log base 3 to both sides. So they would do this. Log base 3 of 3 to the x is less than log base 3 of 20. And so here the 3's cancel and they get x is less than log 3 of 20. Okay, so that's the way the book would set it up. And again, then you just do your change to base formula. If when I do this again, what I do is I just change it to logarithmic form. So I would write this log base three 
my answer is 20. And then x over here, but you can see what happens is the logarithm ends up on this side when I do it this way. So I have to, because I do it this way, I have to always switch the inequality sign around. Okay? So this is where if you do it the way the book does it, you just keep the inequality the same way. Because I've written the logarithm on the left, it has to switch the inequality sign so you get the same answer. But totally up to you which way you do it. I just prefer doing the logarithm. Uh, to skip a step, as you can see, I didn't have to write this down. I went directly to here, but I have to flip that inequality sign if I do it that way. And so now it would just be simply typing in log 20 divided by log 3. So log 20 divided by log 3. And we get 2.727. 2.727. So 2.727 is greater than x, or x is greater less than 2.727. So again, you get the same thing either way. If you would have done it up here, you'd still get the x is less than 2.727. It's just written in reverse order, get the same answer. So let's do this one. Again, I'll show you the way the book would do it. Uh, the book would, since it's base 10, they would just add 10 to both sides and move this stuff, everything, to the exponent. Okay? If you do it the way I do it, then I would just write it's base 10, so it's 10 to the second. And the x is over here, and because I've done it this format, I have to flip the inequality sign around. So you can see here the, the 10 and the um, log base 10, since they're both the same, they cancel. So here you get x is less than 100. Here you get 100 is greater than or equal to x. They should be. Okay, so again, you get the same thing, you just have to remember if you take, by simplifying this a step, you have to flip the inequality sign around. So, I'd like you to try 9, 10, 11, and 12, see how you do on those, and then come back and check it. So pause the video, do them, and come back and check. So, if you've done this, again, I'm going to do it the way I do it. If you want to do it the way the book does it, that's fine. I'm going to switch this to exponential form, so my base is e, so I go ln. My answer is 2, and my exponent is x, and I have to flip the inequality sign. Okay? So now you would just do ln 2 on the calculator. Point 0.693. And you're done. This one, it's base 10. So again, I'm just going to switch it to exponential form. Log base 10 of 3. Flip my inequality. 2x minus 6. Um, and again, since it's base 10, I don't even need to write. I can just put logs and do it on the calculator. It's not wrong if you put the base 10. You just don't need to. So we're going to go log 3. Log 3, which is 0.477. Add 6, so 6.477. And then divide by 2. Okay? So... What, that would be 3.2385, um, so 9. We round it off. All right. And then 11. 
Again, I'm going to get the, I have to get the logarithm by itself first. So I'm going to go log x. We're going to subtract 9 from both sides. Is less than negative 5. I'm going to switch this to exponential form. So it's base 10 to the negative fifth. Flip my sign around. X. And so 10 to the negative fifth, you can just do on the calculator, or it's 1 over 10 to the fifth, which would be what? 10 to the first would be 1 tenth, so 0 0.00001. All right, let's check it and make sure. Ten to the negative fifth. Yeah, four zeros one. So it'd be that. So x is less than that. And then lastly, uh, this one again. I have to get the logarithm by itself first. So I'm going to add one. So two ln x is greater than five. I'm going to divide by 2, ln x is greater than 5 halves, and now I switch it to exponential form. So remember my base, ln, is base e to the 5 halves, flip the inequality sign around, x, and now we can just do e to the 5 halves. Uh, so e to the 5 halves, so 12.182, so x is greater than 12.182. So again, you can do it the way the book does it, you can do it the way I do, you just, the only thing that comes in when you write it the way I do it is Besides saving the step, though, you have to remember with inequalities that you have to flip the inequality center around. So whichever you're more comfortable with, please write down any questions you have on the video. Again, you can put those on the Google Classroom. Uh, maybe I or other students can answer those questions. But it's uh, the assignments, page 338, numbers 5 to 39, the odds, and then 47 to 53, the odds. So hopefully uh, that's clear enough for you.